look back in hindsight Everything is 2020 in hindsight We make mistakes, we're learning from the in hindsight be yours today and your tomorrow In hindsight is so much clearer now How do we build healthy relationships that last? Today on Hindsight, the podcast, we explore this with Dr. Mark A. Hicks, an author, counselor, life coach, and podcast host. Combining professional expertise with personal experiences, Dr. Hicks shares insights on love and the five components that can transform relationships. Hey, good morning. How are you doing today, doctor? Doing great. Thank you for having me. Should I call you Dr. Hicks? Just Mark. call me Mark. Just call me Mark. Mark. <laughs> I, I, I actually that. use that. I use that formal title because my books are on Amazon and there's more than one Mark Hicks on Amazon. So uh, if I you're looking for me there, you look, you look for Dr. Mark A. Hicks. Otherwise, just call me Mark. <laughs> All right, my man, my man. Good morning, Mark. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good, good. So this is hindsight. And, and you know, we like to talk about decisions, choices, um, life journey, career journey, you know, things of that sort. So I gave a really brief introduction of yourself. If one, you could tell us where you're calling in from this morning. And then two, just tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm calling in from Knoxville, Tennessee. You might be able to guess that from my accent. I'm originally from <laughs> Knoxville. And as you mentioned, I'm an author and a counselor and a, a relationship specialist and give myself that particular title because I did write the book about relationships. Uh, but mm. I come from a, a, a wide variety of background. I do have a background as a counselor, a therapist. Uh, I have a master's mm -hmm. degree in mental health counseling. I also come from a, a faith-based background, a spirituality background, and I've worked in churches and faith-based programs. And I have worked separately in those uh, lines of work, but also uh, they blend together sometimes. For instance, I've worked in uh, recovery, uh, working with a faith-based program, helping people overcome addiction, but also divorce recovery and all manner of uh, oh, wow. other other issues. Everybody's in recovery for something. And that's the approach yeah. we took in our recovery program is you don't get through life without scars and everybody's in recovery for something. And so whether it's addiction or going through a divorce or chronic illness or dysfunctional family, everybody's going through things. And one of the things that helps us get it through that is relationships. And one yeah, of the things that yeah. puts us in those bad spots is very often the dysfunctional relationships in our life. And so I'm a big believer that if we're going to have healthy lives in every area, if we're going to have strong careers, uh, if we're going to have a great home life, we have to learn how yeah. to build relationships with a partner, a spouse, with family, with friends, with coworkers. We have to love all these people on different levels, obviously, different kinds of yeah. love. But we love we love all these people. We love humanity. Uh, if we if we believe in such things, we love God. We love our planet. We love all these things, and it all comes back to the same principles. If we're going to have relationships in every area of life, uh, mm -hmm. whether it be career, family, or anything else, it comes back to knowing how to build those healthy relationships. Right. So did this, this life's journey of yours, of love, did that start at an early age or was there something that kind of influenced you to change direction a little bit, right? Yeah, you know, I didn't always know what I know now. <laughs> and I've learned a lot along the way. Uh, I did yes, sir. I did learn some things from my family, a lot of things. I grew up in a very healthy, happy family. I was very yeah. fortunate for that. Not everyone can say that. And so I, uh, I want to recognize how fortunate I am to be able to say that. But even if you come from a healthy family, you don't always understand how to build healthy relationships. And early in my life, uh, in a first marriage, I was in a terrible uh, situation, a horribly toxic relationship that ended in divorce. Uh, I still have the emotional scars to prove that. And yeah. That is one of the things that kind of set me on a track. Uh, it, I didn't realize it fully at the time. Looking back, I can see how, how that experience planted some seeds in my life uh, that eventually grew <clears throat> into this calling that I feel now uh, of learning and sharing how to build healthy relationships because it was just torture to live yeah. in a toxic uh, relationship. It was torture to go through a divorce. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and what I wanted to know is what is love? Uh, mm -hmm. even if you come from a healthy family, you can't always exactly define what that is and how to build it. And I knew there had to be some way to learn what love is and how to practice it. And so over the course of time, influenced by my, uh, my experience in a healthy family, influenced by my experience in a, uh, 
and psychology and spirituality, but also my painful divorce. I learned how to do yeah. that. So do, okay. Tell me your degrees. What are your degrees in? I have a, a bachelor's in psychology, a master's in mental health counseling, a master's in divinity, and a doctorate in ministry. My uh, doctoral dissertation was on uh, recovery. Right. So that's what I wanted to get in. I was thinking theology, but it's ministry. Yeah. Okay. But sim- so, very similar track, though. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so what led you to take that path? in school. Now you told me the toxic relationship. Were you problematic in the relationship and you knew it was something that you needed to tweak or, you know, just, and not to go too deep into your relationship, Mm -hmm. but I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, get a foundation here. Yeah. When I, when I got married, I really just didn't understand life. I was young and didn't understand things. I uh, yeah. fell, fell in love like a lot of people do and yeah, tried yeah. desperately to make that work. But when you're in these toxic relationships, um, and I, and I'm very careful here because I have a policy to never publicly specifically criticize my, my ex-wife. I just don't that's, want that's to, why I put it. That's why I yeah. put it towards you. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I want to be very careful. That. That's just a policy I have. I don't criticize yeah, yeah. her directly or talk about specifics that, that she did or point fingers or anything like that. And I also want to recognize right. that, that, yeah, you, when you go through a, a breakup or a divorce, you have to recognize your own contribution to that, whatever it was. Yeah. You know, we always right. make mistakes. We always have to, the mistake people make is coming out of that. And if they can genuinely say it was mostly the other person's fault, they don't look at maybe even the small things that they did wrong uh, mm-hmm, to, mm-hmm. that they need to correct. But yeah, I was right. in the in that terribly toxic situation where I was always trying to figure out how to make things work. And I found that I was twisting myself into knots trying to make a relationship work that was that was just not going to work and ultimately came to the point that I didn't feel like I was me anymore. I didn't I didn't know myself anymore. I had given okay. up so much of myself trying to twist myself into something to make the marriage work that I didn't exist anymore. And that's when I ultimately decided I can't I can't stay here. So what jobs have you had? um growing up did you did you have normal jobs like a kid and then you progressed as you went through school like what kind of jobs did you have yeah as a kid I, I i did kind of the normal things i uh, worked in a couple of retail stores sweeping floors and waiting on customers and washing windows mm-hmm. and doing those kind of things a couple of local retail stores in a small town where i grew up uh was a lifeguard uh in the summer oh wow uh, that was a pretty cool job i enjoyed that one a lot uh yeah and so yeah just kind of normal normal stuff growing up uh once i became a professional i've worked mm-hmm. in a lot of different things i've worked as a minister i've been an international missionary i've been a, a professional uh therapist in hospitals and in clinics and things of that nature uh, mm-hmm. and and then i did a number of things within that i've uh, because of those okay. jobs i was able to uh, as i said run a uh I led a recovery program. I've been a disaster response coordinator. Uh, I've wow. been a radio host in the Czech Republic Had a nationwide radio show in the Czech Republic. Um, and it was an English speaking show though. I only speak a tiny bit of Czech. What, uh, what? <laughs> Hold on. All right. <laughs> I didn't see that one. What did you talk about in the Czech Republic? Love obviously, right? Well, I did, I did self-help stuff. It was a general self-help okay. show talking about, you know, uh-huh. how to deal with difficult people at work, how to, how to build a better family life, just all the different, uh, self-help kind of, uh, mental health and wellness theme show. And so yeah. it was a weekly show I had, uh, in the Czech Republic that aired in one of the largest, uh, radio stations there. And it was a, it was a lot of fun. That's pretty cool. Hey, so, so you've worked in a lot of different jobs, most yeah. of them in with the, with the intent to help people. Right. That's what I'm kind of gathering. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's always been kind of the theme of my life is, you know, what can I do to try to make the world a little better place? So what in transitioning between the different jobs when you became career oriented, uh, what were some of the bigger challenges that you had to overcome? Czech Republic, maybe uh, I don't know why you were in the Czech Republic, Uh, but, you know, what were some of your challenges and hurdles that you had to overcome as you, you know, made your way to where you are right now? Yeah, you know, there's there's all of these situations. I basically have always just said yes. Uh, someone asked me one time, <laughs> how did how did you do all of these different things? I said I have no idea. I'm like Forrest Gump. I just wander aimlessly, and stuff happens. Uh, but I think if you're willing <laughs> to say yes to things and just try, uh, that a lot of right. doors open up. 
And okay. I've always kind of had that policy of let's see what happens. And it wasn't yeah. always easy. Uh, yeah, moving the Czech Republic is one of the best things I've ever done and one of the hardest things I've ever done. It was extraordinarily difficult, uh, much more mm. than I thought uh, living in a uh, 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 a different country. Being being an immigrant there is so difficult. The bureaucracy is so different. It's bad enough bureaucracy that we have here uh, with what we yeah. do, but the bureaucracy in the Czech Republic is enormously difficult. And so there's a lot of struggles. And yet I was living in Prague, one of the most beautiful cities in the world, and just mm -hmm. being able to, to see the culture there in Europe was an amazing thing. So I think if you yeah. say yes to life, things tend to happen. But there's always right. challenges with it. It's always hard. Uh, the the when I retell it, yeah, it sounds pretty fun, and it was. But it's uh, all these things are always difficult too. Got, life will give you good and bad at the same right. time. You never get yeah, to a place yeah, yeah, where yeah. it's always good or always <laughs> bad. There's always going to be a little bit of both, and um, probably a lot of both. And as long as you're willing to deal with the good and the bad, there's a lot of things to do out there. Yeah. And that was, that was what I was trying to get to. You know, a lot of times we say, Hey, I did this career and I, and I jumped to this and I jumped to that. And it seems so linear and it seems so seems maybe simplistic in the storytelling. Right. But right. there are a lot of hurdles and a lot of things that we had to overcome. And part of the, part of hindsight is just taking a look back, maybe giving some, some inspiration on some lessons that you've learned, you know, during those transitional per, you know, mm -hmm. periods in your life. So yeah. um, if you, if you don't mind. Yeah. Right. What led you to go to the Czech Republic? Uh, it was an opportunity I had. I was uh, had a uh, knew the guy over there, kind of not well, but I knew of him. I had done right. a lot of work in other countries in uh, in mission work and different humanitarian projects, and so I had a lot of experience. And so I knew of him. So I called him one day and I said, "You know, I'm I've got all this experience working in other countries. Uh, if I can help you." You know, mm -hmm. let me know. I'm, I'm just right. here to help. I know you've got a big challenge over there. So if I can be of help, you know, I would just like to like to offer my services. What I yeah. didn't know when I called and and offered him that is that he was planning to leave that job and was actively looking for a replacement oh, <laughs> for gotcha, himself. Gotcha, I had no right. idea. And so right, right. he literally got off the phone and turned to his wife and he said, I just talked to the person who's going to take my job. I know that's right. <laughs> and he was so thrilled. And yeah. weeks go by and I start getting calls from other people saying, you know, we're looking for someone to uh, take his place in that job in the Czech Republic. Would you be interested in it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Because <laughs> so, uh, I did have experience in other countries. And so I'd never had a long term yeah. uh, placement in, in uh, another country. So I thought, you know, mm -hmm, I've got all this experience. Maybe I can do a long term yeah. job there. And so it, that was just one of those things. And that's what I've seen in my life doing all these different things. I didn't set out to do most of it. It just sort of worked. Uh, the doors right. open and you say yes. Right. To if, if you were talking to someone and they say, hey, hey, Mark, I'm getting ready to go and move over to another country. Mm -hmm. What would some insights be? You say you lived in multiple countries for different mm -hmm. reasons, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what bit of advice would you give someone? It costs a lot of money, but spend the money to get professional people to do your immigration paperwork and visa. Yeah. Uh, get a company to do it. One of the one of the struggles I had is I had people doing this that were part of the organizations I was working for and part of the churches I was working for, but right. they were more amateur than I realized. Uh, they had Got done it. it before. They had some experience. They had some basic understanding. But it became yeah. uh, much more of a struggle with taxes and immigration law mm. and things working with amateurs. If you're going right. to visit, it's pretty easy. If you're going short term, uh, usually three, most countries are three months. It's pretty mm -hmm. easy uh, to get a tourist visa for three months. No problem. Right. If you're going to be okay. more than a tourist visa, get high level professionals to do your work because it's going to help you in the long run. Okay. All right. Appreciate that. Yeah. So now let's talk about love. Yeah. <laughs> What inspired you to focus on the five components of love and like, what are they? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the inspiration uh, is an interesting story uh, because I do come from a faith-based background and do come from a, right. a church background. The, the five components of love are actually based on the five uh, books of the wisdom literature of the Old Testament. Uh, okay. And so even if you're not a spiritual person or a religious person, I would still argue this stuff has been around for thousands of years. This stuff has been taught 
for thousands of years through various cultures. You don't necessarily have to be a religious person to understand the, the impact of ancient wisdom. And so right. that's where this comes from. And if you do believe in the spiritual component of the scripture that carries even more weight, uh, the five books, there's no place in scripture that says, here's the five components of love. But those five books, right. I began to see themes of how mm -hmm. wisdom is mm -hmm. built. And love is really the greatest wisdom. Love is okay. wisdom. If we understand okay. love, we understand life. We understand connections. We understand wisdom. And so each one of the components is inspired by uh, one of the books of wisdom. I actually have a second book called The Learning Love Bible Study that shows that mm -hmm. source material. The first book is a self-help book because I wanted everyone to have an, an understanding of what love is and how to build it. Uh, and okay. so I wrote the first book from a self-help counseling standpoint, uh, kept religion out of it because I want everyone to be able to read it comfortably. Uh, but then I wrote a second book that is more of a faith-based religious uh, book showing the biblical inspiration. Now, as far as what, what, are, what are, the, oh, sorry, go what, ahead. What, well, what are the name of the books? Uh, the, the first book is Learning Love, Building okay. a Life That Matters and Healthy Relationships That Last. Uh, okay. That subtitle actually comes from a professor of mine who used to tell us that uh, he was a counseling professor. And he said, every client you'll ever see in counseling, what they're looking for is a life that matters and healthy relationships that last. Yeah. And yeah. what I've learned is if you learn love, you know how to build that. You know how right. to have a life that matters and healthy relationships that last. The second book okay. is the Learning Love Bible Study, uh, which shows the okay. source material. It shows how I was inspired uh, to, to write about the five components of love. And I just make them up. Like I say, they've been around for thousands of years. Uh, and so the five components of love, just very briefly, uh, the first one is grief. And people are kind of shocked by that usually because they think when we talk about love, we're going to talk about bubble gum and butterflies, that everything's right. uh, sweet and beautiful. Uh, and we'll right. get to that. But the foundation of love is grief because no one gets through this life without scars. Uh, right. You're always going to experience pain. And if you talk to someone who puts up emotional walls, keeps people at arm's length, uh, struggles to connect with people, they'll always tell you a story of tragedy and of trauma and of heartbreak. And what right. I want people to know is, yes, there are things in life that, that are so painful, sometimes they leave a hole in your heart. Yeah. But you can live a really good life with a hole in your heart. And that's yeah. what I want people to understand about grief, is that okay. grief is a healer. And it allows you to have those connections, have those loving relationships, have the, the life that matters and healthy relationships that last, even with a hole in your heart, mm. uh, even with the scars of life. And when we understand yeah. that and we learn how to heal from the hurts of life, then we are setting ourselves up with a foundation to be able to connect and build lives of love. Uh, okay. The second one is emotion. That one everybody knows. You have to have an mm -hmm. em emotional connection. Uh, and some people struggle with that one because they're more introverted. They, they struggle to show their emotions. It's okay. Just practice. Sometimes these yeah, things are practices, yeah. you know, just show, the people in your life need to know you love them. Uh, and so say it. And if you can't say the word love, because for some people coming out of abusive backgrounds, uh, the word love can be a loaded word. Um, mm -hmm. Say things like, I appreciate you. You know, say yeah. things like, thank you. You know, those kind of things right. still count. Uh, but right. emotional connection is vital. The third is practicality. Uh, I always say that, that emotion brings us together. Practicality keeps us together. This is what makes relationships okay. work long term. It's things like learning how to deal with money decisions. I knew a couple mm. one time that were a wonderful couple. They really had a fantastic life together. But because he had a, a spending addiction mm. and what could not manage money and was driving them into uh, into all kinds of financial distress and then lying about it, you know, hiding loans and things he was getting, high interest loans he was getting, uh, it destroyed their relationship. Uh, right. You have to manage money. Dealing with mental health issues, that's a practical matter. Mm. They're treatable. Yeah. Uh, things like depression, anxiety, those take a toll on relationships. Get treatment. Communication mm. skills is a skill. And so get treatment yeah. uh, or, or, you know, get, get help in learning if you need to learn communication skills. Those are practical matters that keep us together in our love, in our emotional connections. Okay. The fourth is acceptance. And of course, mm -hmm. it goes without saying we have to accept people in our lives. They're not going to be perfect. Uh, they're going to make mistakes. We have to have it at a certain level of acceptance of people. But it really comes okay. down to accepting ourselves. Brene mm -hmm. Brown did some great work on this, uh, wrote on this beautifully, that you really can't love people more than you love yourself. You have to accept yourself first. Yeah. Love yeah. is not a commodity like money. If you need money, you can go get a second job. You can get a loan. 
You can steal right. it. I don't recommend that. One. But you, you know, there are theoretical <laughs> ways you can get money uh, in a lot right, of different right. ways, right or wrong. But love right. is organic. Love grows. It is something that yeah. grows in us. And you can't give away more than you've grown within yourself. So that however you love and accept yourself is going to be your ceiling. You cannot love mm. your spouse, your children, uh, your family, your neighbors more than you love yourself. You have to start there. And then finally, uh, the fifth one is passion. And when we use the word passion, we often think about uh, intimacy and things like that. That's, and that's part of it, certainly. But really talking about a passion for life. That's the wind in our sails. Don't forget mm -hmm. to have fun. Uh, we sometimes take life very seriously, and there's reasons to do that. That's why we have practicality. Uh, there mm -hmm. are tragedies in life. That's why we have grief. We're not forgetting those things. But don't right. forget to have fun. Have passion. Yeah. Enjoy your life and enjoy the people you're with. Enjoy your, your spouse, your children, your family, your coworkers, your friends. Really enjoy these people as much mm -hmm. as possible and keep the passion in your life. That's what gets us up in the morning uh, ready to yeah. face the day is we have, a, we have that passion for life and for the people in our life. And life can get to be routine. That practical element can get to be hard. The grief is certainly difficult. And we can forget <laughs> that last and very important element, uh, the component of, lo of love that is passion. If you right. learn and practice all five of those, mm -hmm. you can build healthy relationships. Even if you come from a dysfunctional background, even if you've been through a divorce, you learn and practice the five components of love, which I said have been taught for thousands of years, yeah. You, can, you can build relationships, even if you've not had healthy relationships in the past. Right. Wow. All right. And it's pretty impactful that you start off with grief. Um, I was sitting there writing down notes, if you're wondering what I was doing, uh, going through those five components. You've been to a lot of countries. You've been doing uh, missionary work, maybe? Yes. In some of them? Yes. Self-help. You, you did uh, radio shows in the Czech. Mm -hmm. um, were you always focusing in on these five components? And even if you weren't, could you share a, like a success story where these components made a significant difference in someone's life that you touched? Yeah, I, th I think in some way, yes, I've always been uh, kind of headed toward this book and, and this message. Uh, I didn't always yeah. understand that. I didn't always know it. But yeah, in a lot of ways, I've always been fascinated with the idea of how do you build these relationships? And then, as I said, when I uh, when my first marriage crashed and burned, I became even more uh, curious about how does this, how can this even work? And it's skeptical, right. of course, in many ways at that point in my life. Uh, it's yeah. made a big, it's made a big difference in my life, uh, mm -hmm. learning these. I'm now, uh, married, uh, for a second time, extraordinarily happy. Uh, mm -hmm. so lucky to be in a, in a healthy relationship with a wonderful yeah. person. I often say that I've had a bad marriage and a good marriage and good is better. And so we need to learn <laughs> how to have uh, these good relationships. And so it makes a difference yeah. in my own personal life. Uh, and yeah, I've had people tell me, particularly when it comes to uh, the idea of the first component of love, of grief, that that mm -hmm, is the one mm -hmm. that people really tend to focus on because we miss that one. And, right. you know, a lot of the others we kind of understand. Um, the acceptance part, a lot of people don't know that you have to love yourself first. And that is the ceiling. That's, that's, that's as far as you can go uh, right. in loving someone else. So that comes as a surprise to some people. The others, mm -hmm. yeah, they may have ignored them. They may have put them on back burner. But they sort of instinctively know that we need passion. We need practicality. Right. We need emotion. Grief is the one that, that people, the, their their minds start turning about that's why my relationships aren't working. Yeah. Uh, I worked, I worked with a lady many years ago now in a, a counseling clinic where I worked and she was an elderly lady, I think around 72 years old, mm -hmm. came in a uh, terribly sad story, terribly depressed, terribly bitter, just filled with anger, never had a good relationship in our life. Long story short, you could, tr when we tracked back where that began, she had a falling out with her sister. 50 mm. years prior and she had in her mm. mind if my sister betrays me i can't trust anybody and she spent wow. the rest of her life distrusting even the people who loved her that were close to her even even pushing her own children out of her life uh looking at any slight as, as a mm. betrayal any mistake someone made as a betrayal uh, and living her old life in such bitterness that eventually as an older person she basically collapsed under the weight 
of that yeah. of that bitterness, and that's why she ended up in the hospital, uh, mm -hmm. and that's why we ended up seeing her. Uh, those kinds of things, people don't know how to grieve. They think I'm just going to grip my teeth and come through this, and they end up shutting people out of their life. And yeah. so I've had a number of people tell me that's where the light bulb went off uh, that I started mm. seeing. This is why my relationships aren't working. There's other things I may need to be working on. Uh, as people read the book, they said, yeah, I'm not doing this one as well as I could. This is something we can yeah. work on. But that that element, understanding that grief is a component of love, that yeah. learning how to live a good life with a hole in your heart, learning how to mm -hmm. come back from the struggles and, and connect with people anyway is a monumental uh, a light that goes off with some folks that really changes lives. And that's been uh, an amazing thing to see that people see they can have relationships again, yeah. but they have to grieve first. Wow. That's a great example. That is a really, really good example. And I, I appreciate you sharing that one. Yeah. So her, her, the light bulb came on. She was in the hospital. Did she recover? I mean, can we go that far? And in, in, uh, to to the extent that I could see, yeah, there was there was some there was some yeah. progress. Uh, but the problem <laughs> is, and this is sort of a warning: when you get to be in your seventies and you've done this for fifty years, it becomes right. pretty ingrained. And even if you begin to see a little bit of it, uh, there's a lot of regret that sets in. And so yeah, and then that's a whole nother level no, another yeah. thing. So it's not too yeah. late. I don't want to get the wrong message here. It's never too late to learn to build these relationships of love. But right. the earlier you can start, the better. Uh, to, so as soon as you start hearing these, I encourage people get my book and learn to do this because the learn the earlier you do it, uh, the better you're going to be. But just because you haven't uh, done it in most of your life doesn't mean you can't start. And one of the things that I have seen with older folks, particularly, I had uh, yeah. a, a couple of uh, folks, one lady I'm thinking of particular, that was a widow. Uh, she mm -hmm. was in her eighties. She read my book and honestly, she didn't seem really excited about it because those days were past her. Her husband passed away a long time ago. She wasn't, she wasn't looking for that. Her kids had moved off. She had a great relationship with her kids. They had their own right. lives, but she, she read my book because uh, she just knew me and wanted to read my book. And yeah. she and she said, you know, this this isn't going to affect a lot of what I directly do because I'm not okay. going to be in a marriage and my my relationships are basically fine. I can do a few of these things a little bit better, perhaps. But this is something I want to pass on to my kids and my grandkids. This is yeah. something I want. This is something I wish I had known 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Uh, right. She said, if I had known this uh, when I was 20. Uh, my life would, she had a good life, but she said, my life would have been even better. She said, I want my yeah. grandkids to know this. And so that's why I say it's not too late, but we need to be teaching this to as early as possible. So people don't go through the stuff that I went through when I was in my first marriage, but they learn right. how to have these healthy relationships at an early age. What, what, are, <clears throat> what are some signs of a toxic relationship that people often overlook? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> and, that's, and that's one of the problems is that yeah, every relationship yeah. has difficulties. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, that's where is that line of you're having some problems in a marriage and this has become toxic and abusive and things like that. That's a tough mm -hmm. line to walk. And one of the things I, I say in the book is that everyone should be in counseling. Everyone mm -hmm. needs to, you have a doctor. Uh, for your physical ailments. You have a dentist right. to clean your teeth. You have a mechanic <laughs> to fix your car. You need a professional to help you with your mental health and to work through some of these things because there is no clear cut line of, okay, we're having a rocky time in our marriage and this is fixable yeah. and this is toxic and cannot continue this way. Uh, so that's, yeah. a, that's a tough line. But one of the things is if you find yourself always fighting but never resolving <laughs> mm, mm. if you're fighting and arguing and and struggling to try to find solutions and seem to never find a solution you're still coming back to the same argument you had years yeah. ago the same struggles you had years ago uh, that's a cl one clear sign of, of toxicity because toxicity, yeah. people in a healthy relationship of course they still fight <laughs> there's no mm -hmm. relationship we're not going to have struggles and arguments and disagreements we're human beings uh we're going to make mistakes but people in a healthy relationship work towards solutions right. and it may be a struggle to get there and it, it may yeah. take a long time to get there but people in a healthy relationship no matter how bumpy that road is are on a road to uh, a solution to that problem 
or right. somehow resolving that issue. Uh, in a toxic mm -hmm. relationship, things do not get resolved. They just would fight in order to fight to fight another day. And that's well, nowhere somebody should live. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, that's not limited to just a personal relationship either. I mean, that can be a work relationship. And that's one of the things that I like exactly. to focus on. Like, let's be solution focused when we attack these different issues, right? Don't just right. come with all the problems and complaining. Let's like, okay, so what's the solution to this problem? Like what, what, what courses of action can we take to get to a solution or to, you know, envision yeah. that, right? Let's not focus on the negative or the toxic, right? So, exactly. I, yeah, so I appreciate it. And that's one of the things I try to say in the book as well, is that while yeah. we tend to naturally focus on uh, romantic relationships, marriage, partnerships, things like that, family relationships, yeah. that's natural. But these principles work in every connect human connection. Uh, yeah. It works on, with the coworkers as well. You can go through those five components of love. If we're going to yeah. have a healthy, thriving relationship with our coworkers, those same components uh, work. Now it's a different yeah. relationship, obviously. Uh, there's yeah, not, yeah, the, yeah. not the same emotional investment or anything like that, but those right. same components work in every relationship of life. Uh, and that's, that's why it's not just about marriage. It's about all forms of love and connection. Got you. So what steps can individuals take to heal after like a toxic relationship? And I know mm -hmm. we can, we can go through these five and probably get to, <laughs> get to the point we need to be right yeah but um yeah like what, what steps would you recommend yeah obviously grief uh you're going to go through that yeah. don't fight it you know grief is a healer a it doesn't one. it doesn't That's feel good, good. uh it, it people avoid it because it hurts so much but the pain is a healer uh it will yeah. it it's a it's a uh, i often tell folks this is this is the way we have been wired up to heal just because it feels bad doesn't mean it is bad it is a yeah. it's a way that we heal and so go through the emotions of grief and get help for that that's when yeah, I, yeah. it's in the, it's in the book on grief or the chapter on grief that i do say everyone needs to be in counseling that can apply to okay. other chapters as well but get get therapy get us some help like I said, if we were, if we broke our arm, we'd go to the doctor. Why are we not going to someone when they yeah. broke our heart? In fact, yeah. there's people, uh, that, that would argue. And I think a lot of people would say that broken heart, that pain of that, that broken relationship is a lot more painful and, and a lot more, uh, long lasting than a broken arm. Oh yeah. We will, we will seek help, uh, for a toothache. We'll take our car to the mechanic, uh, because we hear a rattle, but we won't go to a professional to get help when our life is devastated, uh, when right. our emotions are when our emotions are drained and we are broken uh, on, an emo on an emotional state. Uh, that makes no sense to me. Uh, we have professionals out there to help us, and so I really encourage folks: don't don't buy into the stigma and don't don't let you know whatever society says about counseling. I think that's improving, uh, and I'm glad to see it improving. There's less yeah. and less stigma. Let's be all be part of that and get help. And if you do that, if you embrace the idea of grief and you get help for that process, mm. you can get through those pains of life and heal. Doesn't do away with the hurt, but that's why I use that right. phrase. You have a hole in your heart, but you can live a good life with a hole in your heart. Wow. I tell you that that's, you, you PSA, you know, get some, you know, seek out, yeah, seek yeah. out some, some assistance or some help or some yeah. counseling or whatever term you want to use that, but just go, you know, yeah. and, and take care of yourself. Yeah. I think how absurd it would be if, if uh, you had the opportunity to go to a mechanic and you said, no, I'm going to fix it myself, even though you had no idea how to fix your car. I mean, that would, we would end up in a great big mess. Uh, and that's, but that's exactly what people do. They say, no, I can handle this myself when they have no idea how to go from here. And I think an interesting point is, you know, part of it is the stigma. You talk mm -hmm. about that as well. Two, you know, when you go to the doctor with a broken arm, that they are the people to fix your arm, right? Yeah. And it will get better but when yeah. you start dealing with relationships when you start dealing with heartache and things like that yeah. you don't really always know where to go or yeah. how to fix it or you believe that you can do it yourself i can work through these five steps on my own and i don't need right. anybody any assistance right, right. and so it, it really becomes difficult and that's why i said here's a psa like go out and seek that assistance seek that help because that's you know nine times out of ten the answer because you got to get the right person right to to yeah. help you out with that 
And I think that's a fair point, uh, that it is mm -hmm. more complicated in counseling than going to the doctor for a broken arm. Yeah, you know yeah. the results. You know exactly what the doctor is going to do. They're going to do the x-ray. They're going to do the cast. We know that. We don't always know what the counselor is going to do, and that can be pretty scary. We don't know right. what they're going to say. And, or yeah. we think we know what they're going to say. Yeah, that's I, I had a, one. Yeah. I had a person tell me not long ago that I was that I was working with, and uh, they said, well, I've been really hesitant to come and talk to you because I know what you're going to say. I said, well, what am I going to say? And he, you know, rattled off some stuff, and I was like, that's not at all what I was thinking. Let me tell you yeah. what I'm actually thinking right now. And I, right. I gave him some thoughts and some insights, and he's like, yeah, I didn't expect that. That was very helpful. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't don't just assume what the counselor is going to say because you've yeah. seen it on television and things. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. You build all these things in your mind. You have all these conversations yeah. right in your mind. And it'll <laughs> take you down these different roads that aren't real roads. So uh, exactly. seek some professional assistance. Exactly hey, so right. What, what does it mean to build a life that matters? What does that mean to you? To me, if you, when I say, uh, build a life that matters and healthy relationships that last. Those are really two sides of the same coin. Uh, mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. one road leads to the other. If you have healthy relationships that last, then you have a life that matters. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to fit any kind of mold. I, that doesn't mean everyone has to, to be married or be in a permanent uh, partnership. Right. It doesn't mean everyone has to have children. It can take a lot of different things. Your relationship may be with your coworkers because you love your job. You truly are called yeah. to that mission of whatever your job is as a scientist or a teacher or whatever it is. There's a lot of ways it can happen. But when you mm -hmm. have healthy, happy, thriving relationships in your life, uh, regardless of what forms that takes, and it is fulfilling in your life, then you have a mm -hmm. life that matters. And right. when you have that life that matters, it's going to enhance your relationship with all of those people. So I really think it's, it's two sides of the same coin. Uh, it, it Both roads lead the same direction, and uh, you have one because you have the other. All right, you answered my next question. So I'm going to say, how do healthy relationships contribute to fulfilling, yeah. uh, to a fulfilling life and career? So, uh. yeah, it, 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 one leads to the other. And so healthy relationships, I think, are, are how we have all of that. You have that thriving career. You have the beautiful family. You have the life yeah. you want because you know how to build relationships and even come back from the ones that are broken in order to build new ones. It's funny how you you know, and I've been through both where you go to go to work and you're like, oh, you're dreading, yeah, going to work, yeah, because of one person maybe, or yeah. because it's not fulfilling, whatever it is, right? But usually it's dealing with the relationships, and then on the other side, you can have this where you look forward to go to work, yeah, right. You're happy to see the people that you're working with, right, because you've developed that strong and lasting relationship with them. You're happy to go home. You're not going to the bar at the end of the day, right? Right. Because exactly. you're dreading going home because you built that strong relationship. Yep. So that's that's pretty awesome. Go ahead. That, no, exactly right. Yeah. You, you when you have those relationships, you want to go to work and work with those people and accomplish whatever it is you do uh, alongside mm -hmm. the people you work with, and then you're excited to go home because you get to see your family and people you yeah. love. And and yeah, it's just it is a horrible uh, existence to get up in the morning mm -hmm. and think that you have to dread your entire day. Uh, and people oh, do yeah. that. People do that. Yeah. Uh, they, oh, dread, yeah. they dread their job. They dread seeing their family. They dread what they're having their face. And there is, that's not a way to live. And that's yeah. why we do need to get help. We do need to learn to build healthy relationships. And one of the practical realities, the third component of love is some relationships have to end. That's a practical mm. reality. It's not easy. That's why we have grief. Yeah. Uh, right. Don't say that lightly. Don't just end it because somebody made a mistake or there was a problem. Uh, things can be fixed. Right. But one of the practical realities is some jobs need to be left. Some relationships yeah. need to be left uh, yeah. in order to build those thriving ones, to give yourself an opportunity to find thriving relationships, thriving jobs, thriving mm. uh, mission in life. And right. that's the way people should live. That People should always want that life that matters and the healthy relationships that last. And that comes through relationships. So look, can you share a pivotal moment in your journey uh, that reinforced the importance of meaningful relationships? Yeah. Uh, I think as I left some of the, uh, the organizations that I've worked for in the past and ventured yeah. into this, this adventure I'm on now of being an author and a ghostwriter and a speaker, uh, 
that is a whole new adventure. I had always worked with either churches or organizations or nonprofits or someone. Uh, right. And now, uh, th- at this point in my life, uh, I'm self-employed. I'm out here on my nice. own with this message. And having not having a company or an organization with me, I'm out here just with the people in my life. And mm. that reinforces even more the support that I have from my wife and my family and, and people and friends and people around me uh, that are encouraging when I'm in this new adventure with this message, trying to, to help people, but I don't have a, a company I'm working for. Uh, I don't have that, that, uh, that standard paycheck that, that a company right. brings or anything like that. I'm out there yeah. on my own, but it's a mission I believe in. And so when you're doing right. that, uh, the, the people in your life, it really shows how much you uh, need and value that support. I like it. I was reading the, um, the, the, uh, the alchemist mm-hmm. and they talked about the young guy who was on, you know, trying to get to your personal legend. Right. Yeah. And they're just listening to you, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. you're on your personal legend now. Yeah. And uh and, and you're following your passion to help people in your way. Yeah. Right. In the way that you were supposed to be doing it. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think I've prepared a long time to, to yeah. share share this message uh that I yeah. think can change lives. And so yeah, it's a it's a big adventure, it's a lot of fun, a little scary. Yeah. Uh but that's that's why relationships around you are always so important. So what advice would you give to someone struggling to find purpose and meaning in their life? Because you've found your purpose and your meaning mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. Um, let's say I'm struggling and I just don't, I don't have purpose or meaning. What would you tell me? Yeah, I think the question comes down to uh, who are you connected to? Who do you love? Mm-hmm. Who loves you? Yeah. Are you yeah. really thriving in those relationships? Uh, are you taking those for granted, looking looking at other things? Are you really appreciating the people in your life? Uh, are you loving what you do? And there's a, mm-hmm. there's a relationship there, too. There's always people in what we do. Uh, and are we uh, contributing what we can contribute? Everybody brings yeah. something to the table uh, as human beings. We're all, we're all important. And so if you're looking for meaning, look to the people around you. Uh, and, and you're going to find one of two things. You're going to find people that really support you um, or you're going to find people that are draining you yeah. uh, and, and keeping you from that purpose. And mm. that's, going to be, that's going to be some decisions to make. That's why yeah. we need to understand what love is and how to live it out. Uh, it's not just a feeling. It's not just a commitment. There's more to it than those things. Those are part of it. But there's more to it than that. When we understand what love yeah. is and how to live it out, we can really appreciate and thrive in those relationships uh, that are in our life and those that are toxic, those that are draining, those that are keeping us from our purpose, mm-hmm. we can, we can better identify those as well. Wow. Yeah, when you said the draining, you know, I always, when I, when I'm around people, I like to let them know this, this one thing, if, if, cause it stands out. There are some people who their whatever you want to call it, their aura, mm-hmm. you know, it wants, it, it kind of draws you to them, right? It's positive yeah. energy. Yeah. That's, and I'm feeding off of it. Right. But then I try to infuse some more positive energy. Right. Right. So that there's a, you know, there's a a give and a take in this whole thing. But what I warn people of is a lot of people are going to bring that negative energy Mm -hmm. right to your positive aura as well. And they're going to feed off of you and they're going to drain you of your positivity Mm -hmm. and just be mindful of that. You know, be mindful of that. And and those are those practicalities. uh, You know, you may have to separate from this, this, individual right or this situation or this career or whatever it is yeah. right because it's too draining on, on you so yeah that's I, exactly I that. right a lot of people that, that don't understand the fullness of love get caught yeah. up in the second component of love that is emotion and mm, yep. because yeah. i uh had a connection at one time because things were once good because uh i was you know in this job for a while and i've invested a lot in it or i've invested a lot in this relationship they get into that emotional connection Emotion is certainly an important part of love, but it's not the full story. Practicality right. is a big part of love as well. And making those really tough decisions, 
of understanding this relationship is toxic. Uh, yeah. This is not where I can be and and live a fulfilling life. This job is toxic. Uh, those things have to be identified. And so love, as I said, is not just bubble gum and butterflies. There are really tough <laughs> decisions that have to be made. Yeah. And that's why yeah. practicality is one of the components of love is that helps us when we understand the practical nature of life to make those very tough decisions. And when we make those tough decisions, it is going to cause grief. And that's why right. we have the first component of love. All right, we're going to shift a little bit, and I'm going I'm to dig into you a little bit more. I right. ask you a specific question. Yeah. Um, can, you sub can you subscribe? Can you describe <laughs> a significant choice you were forced to make in your life? Just a significant choice. Yeah, boy, that's a tough one. Um, yeah. Uh, and it can be in anything. Make. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, let's see, forced to make. There's so many choices that I've made, but I never felt forced. I've always, well... <laughs> I think the, well, the one that comes to mind is uh -huh. um, when I was in the Czech Republic, um, had some good things going there. The radio show had a number of other humanitarian things, working with the church there and so forth, that were going really well in some ways. Uh, and I was excited about it. And then COVID hit. Um, mm. And I had a plan to be there uh, five years or more and right. and really kind of saw, saw my future uh, in some of the international work that I was involved in there and COVID hit, uh, the visa office shut down. Uh, my mm. visa expired. I basically had to leave the country because of visa issues. There's a lot more yeah. complicated things involved there as well, but the, to okay. make a long story short, uh, the visa was, uh, I was no longer allowed to stay there because my visa had to come back to the U S and, uh, it was horribly disappointing because I really saw yeah. my future there. And so I kind of had to make a choice at that point when that door was then closed and I'd seen, a, uh, seen my life and my career kind of evolving there. And then, you know, you don't, it wasn't anything that anybody could do anything about a pandemic is, is, uh, yeah. you know, it wasn't a choice yeah. that I made. It was just something we all had to deal with and right. that door was then closed. And so, yeah, then I had to make some tough choices and I think that's what happens. Um, uh, and maybe, uh, I, I love the way you actually put that question of what are you forced to make? Because yeah, there are some times that, that we are forced to make decisions, but we're never stuck. And I think right. sometimes when we get forced into a decision, forced into a, a situation that we didn't want, didn't foresee, uh, mm -hmm. and the doors are closed around us, it starts to feel like we're stuck. And, yeah. and for a while, I honestly did feel that way. There were, there were a few weeks and months I was just terribly uh, disappointed and depressed that that door had closed and I wasn't sure what I was going to do uh, from mm -hmm. there. Uh, but that was after I started kind of coming through and realizing I'm not stuck. I've done a lot of things in my life. You know, my vision, uh, that door closed, but there could be other visions. That ultimately, again, long story short, uh, ultimately led to what I'm doing now. It led to yeah. me finishing my book, the book that kind of been in the back of my mind for a long mm. time and there sort of uh, sort of growing there, sometimes without me even knowing it. Uh, over a couple of years uh, from the pandemic, even past that, uh, through a number of situations, I finished both my books in one year uh, because they were – some people asked me once, how long did it take you to write your book? I said, well, mm -hmm. either three months or – 18 years, whichever one you start yeah. counting <laughs> you know, I for a long time. Uh, right. And, but when I actually sat down at my computer and started writing, it took me less than three months because it was all there from a lot of these experiences. Yeah. And so, yeah, we get forced into things. I was forced to leave a job and a situation and a future that I really mm -hmm. thought was unfolding beautifully. And I thought this is what I've been waiting for. And yeah. the door slammed shut, but we're not right. stuck. You're never stuck, even when you're forced to make a choice you don't want to make. Um, right. I think a, okay. another one might be uh, when I did make the decision. It was my decision to, to get divorced. Uh, I, I was one that mm -hmm. left that. That that was an excruciating decision because I did come from a background that said marriage was forever and uh, till mm -hmm. death do you part and things like that. And so I, right. I, I, but I came to the point I felt forced to a place I could no longer live like that. But again, gotcha. not stuck. You can move on from yeah. these from these things and and still live a good life so you made a choice to not give up once you had to leave the check mm -hmm. you, you took that opportunity because everybody had an opportunity to do something yeah. <laughs> maybe not what you wanted yeah. you had an opportunity to just sit and do something during COVID. you yeah. decided to write your books 
Mm -hmm. How did that choice to not give up, to not feel stuck, to take all this experience that you've had throughout your life and sit down, you had a moment of calm, right? <laughs> it didn't seem like calm. Yeah, it yeah, it doesn't seem like, like calm. calm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But you though. had a nice moment of is. calm. How did that choice affect the trajectory of your personal and your professional life? Well, you know, I found a, a, a new calling, a new mission. Yeah. Uh, once it was finally uh, on paper and uh, it wasn't just ideas formulated in my mind, I had taught some of these things in workshops and in, in churches and various places, uh, speeches yeah. I had done, but it really came together and was formulated. And once it was on paper, I realized that this is things, these are things people need to know. These are things yeah. that, that can change lives. And so, yeah, I found a, a whole new mission in all of that. Awesome. All right. Dr. Mark Hicks. I'm going to say all of it. I've asked you a few <laughs> questions. Yeah, yeah. I've asked you a few questions um, and I appreciate your, your candor and, and answering them. Um, but what is something that I haven't asked you or something that you'd like uh, to tell the audience um, that may resonate with them? Yeah. A couple of things uh, that I do try to, to explain in the book that I want people to know is that love is a learned skill set. Uh, that most people, I won't say most, let me take that back. Many people, mm -hmm. uh, learn it so naturally in a healthy family growing up, at least most of it, uh, mm -hmm. that they don't know it's a learned skill set. It's kind of like walking. We're, we're destined and we're, our bodies, as long as assuming you were born in a healthy body, not everybody was, but if you were born in a right. healthy body, then our walking is just something we do. It's, it's some, our bodies were made to do, but it's right. still a learned skill set. We had to learn yeah. it. We fell down a lot and we learned it before we, we remember learning it. But mm. if an accident happens and you had no longer have the ability to walk, there are people through physical therapy, through great deal of effort that learn the components of walking. They learn mm. how to make their brain send that signal. They learn how to move their muscles. They learn how to balance and mm. learn those different components of walking to learn to walk again. And I think yeah. love is very similar. It's a learned skill set. May have learned a lot of it before you even uh, remember learning it because you were born into a healthy family uh, yeah. and you were fortunate that way. And so it seems like it is just natural and we don't have to do anything. It just love is just who we are as human beings. No, it's something we learn growing up. But even if we didn't, even if there is a, a, something that rips that away or we never learned it because we were not born in a healthy family, yeah, it can be learned through the components of love. And so I want to I want people to that feel like I had a lady tell me recently, I don't believe love exists because mm. because she grew up in a very abusive family. And yeah. I said it didn't exist in your family because they didn't know it. They didn't know how right. to do it. They never taught you love. But love exists because it's a learned skill set. And it's going to be harder to learn it as an adult than it was mm. as, a, as a child. But you can still learn it. And, but even for those that were born in a healthy uh, family, you probably didn't learn all five components. You probably yeah. learned two or three or four. And mm. if you're in a place that you think, you know, my relationship is okay, mm -hmm. but I don't have the thriving relationship I wish I had. It's not that you're with the wrong person necessarily. It's not that things are bad. It's that you're probably missing one component or maybe two mm. uh, that you, that you learned growing up how to have basically healthy relationships but you're missing one or two of the components and you're wondering why does somebody like Mark talk about thriving relationships and I can't seem to get it. It's because yeah. you're missing one or two. It doesn't mean you had a bad family. It just means they didn't mm -hmm. teach you uh, that one or two components that you need. And so regardless of your situation, if you, if you're doing okay, but you wish you could have thriving or if you're mm -hmm. doing horribly and you don't know that love <laughs> even exists, right. yeah. love exists if you learn and, and practice all five, because it is a practice, it's something we yeah. learn. It's something we practice. We get better at it and we build those connections. Wow. So in conclusion, <laughs> let's name those books again. Let's tell the listeners where they can find the books so they can get those and read them. And we can all be in a loving state of <laughs> mind <laughs> going forward. This world needs it. And, and, and where can the listeners also find you? maybe communicate, connect with you, or find out what you, what you got going on. Yeah, the, the name of the books is Learning Love, Building a Life That Matters, and Healthy Relationships That Last. Uh, 
Um, my mm-hmm. second book, if you're of a religious mindset or just curious about where I came, came up with these uh, five components, is the, is the Learning Love Bible Study, How the Bible mm-hmm. Teaches the Five Components of Love. Uh, and the best way to get to know me and my books and the other things that I do is my website. It's markahicks.com. It's M-A-R-K. My middle initial is A. And H-I-C-K-S, markahicks.com. There's easy links to my books, uh, to uh, all the other my YouTube, all the other things that I do uh, are all there. And I have a contact page. You can email me. I'd love to, to hear from you. Um, if anybody has a speaking engagement or anything like that, I'm always looking for opportunities. Uh, and so make sure to, to contact me through my website, markahicks.com. Uh, if you're just looking for the books, like I say, you, easy links on my website, or you can go to uh, Amazon and look for Dr. Mark A. Hicks, Learning Love. Thank you, Mark, for sharing your profound insights and experience uh, here today. And your journey and the five components of love offer, to me, invaluable guidance and probably to everyone else for building healthy, lasting relationships. And to the listeners, thank you for tuning in. We hope today's discussion on love and relationship has inspired you to reflect on your own choices and relationships. And don't forget to check out Dr. Hicks' book, Learning Love, Building a Life that Matters and Healthy Relationships that Last. And until next time, keep making choices that lead to a fulfilling and successful life. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Hey, thanks for joining me here on Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. And while I have you here, why don't you take your mouse and go over and click on that subscribe button? No, no, not right there. Over to the right. To, no, no, down, down, right, right there. Boom. Thank you. Now, thank you for subscribing to Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones.